Hi, this is Supriyo. Today we are going to continue with our SEBI current affairs and this time for the month of August 2020. So let's begin. Number one, SEBI is planning to set up a virtual museum of securities market. So a virtual museum, this will be something that you can access online. It will be totally virtual. So SEBI has invited EOIs or the expression of interests to set up a virtual museum of securities market to highlight achievements and milestones of Indian capital market in English, Hindi and other languages. So it will be multilingual and it will actually allow us to understand the history of the Indian stock market and what are the important milestones that we have actually crossed. And the topics that they are going to cover, they are going to cover the market infrastructure, the regulation, enforcement, etc. And uh, this virtual securities market museum will have photos, videos, articles, graphs, newspaper articles, etc. And it will be used including history of noted institutions like UTI and the Forward Market Commission, the FMC, in the online platform. So all the important things that are very important from a historical context of the securities market are going to be covered in this new thing that SEBI is planning to launch. So let us move to number two. SEBI issued procedural guidelines for proxy advisory firms. So what is this? The proxy firms, they advise shareholders on corporate governance issues and assist them in voting on resolutions. Now proxy firms, they have actually recently become very popular in the recent years because many of the important corporate governance related issues have been unearthed by these firms and these firms help the big investors to make the decisions on the votings and all the different things. So SEBI decided that there should be some kind of guideline that are going to regulate these types of firms. So they have said that now they must formulate the voting recommendation policies and disclose the updated voting recommendation policies to clients and ensure annual review of policies. So all the important policies, the recommendary policies that they are following, they have to tabulate and they have to inform to the clients and they must also ensure that annually this policy is reviewed. So that's what they have to do and the methods of research they must also disclose and the clients must be alerted within 24 hours about any factual errors or material revisions. So if any error they can find out then within 24 hours they have to go ahead and tell their clients. Let us move to number three. SEBI decentralizes registration activity of portfolio managers. So this is about the PMS or the portfolio management services. So I have already talked about that in multiple videos. Currently, the PMS applicants submit their registration applications through SEBI's intermediary portal and the applications are processed at the regulator's head office. So all the applications must travel to the head office before they can be processed. And this is not feasible, right? So SEBI has decentralized this entire process and the work now will be delegated to respective regional offices or Mumbai head office based on applicants registered address. So the regional offices they are going to go ahead and take up these activities and this is very important note that SEBI has four important regional offices so you should be knowing about all of them so the eastern region it is headed by the Kolkata regional office then you have the Delhi regional office for the north zone then you have Chennai for south and Ahmedabad for west so all these four regional offices make sure that you remember what SEBI has and let us move to the next item number four Government extends SEBI chairman's term by 18 months. So the SEBI chairman, Ajay Tyagi, his term has been extended by 18 months till February 2022. So till this date, he is going to be in office and his term was first extended in February by six months. So it is his second extension allowing him to further improve regulations and enable ease of doing business. So the government decided that we are not going to change anybody because there is a lot of issues that's happening. There is the pandemic and various different market related issues so let's just have the same person at the helm and it will be a continuity for the SEBI so let us move to number five SEBI allows stock exchange subsidiary to regulate investment advisors. So this means that the investment advisors will now be regulated by stock exchange subsidiary. So every stock exchange they can come out with a subsidiary that's going to regulate these RIAs and this is going to affect 
1300 SEBI RIAs in India. So this is actually SEBI registered investment advisor. Remember the full form, it's very important. So these investment advisors, they actually help the individual investors or sometimes the companies to actually invest in the markets. And so now they are going to be regulated. And uh, just note that the stock exchanges who are going to actually set up these subsidiaries, they must have an operational history of at least 15 years and a minimum net worth of 200 crore rupees and nationwide terminals or investor service center. So these things are very important. These infrastructure they need to have so that they can set up their subsidiary and they can regulate the RIS and uh, these SROs. So these are actually going to be self regulatory organizations. It's very important and questions on SROs are sometimes asked. So just note that. So these SROs, they are going to maintain RIA database and supervise them and refer to SEBI for enforcement. So any kind of issues if they find out, then they are going to refer it to the security is an exchange board of India and they are going to enforce it in turn. So that's the changes that the SEBI has brought out regarding this. Uh, let us move to number six. SEBI issues guidelines to help mutual fund trustees monitor the AMC's activities. So AMC is the asset management company and the mutual fund trustees as we know the different trustees they are responsible to actually monitor the asset management company so that the mutual fund can be run properly. So now SEBI has said that they have to make some changes. So the trustees they are going to appoint a dedicated officer having professional qualification and a minimum five years of experience in finance or financial services related fields. So a dedicated officer will now be appointed by them. This officer has to be an employee of the trustees and report to them and will be treated as an access person. So an access person is a person who has all the financial knowledge of the company and all the sensitive information like the UPSI etc can be given to this person. And the trustees they are also going to have a standard arrangement with independent firms for special audits or some legal counsels whatever they might need and so the total expense ratio of your mutual funds they can actually increase because these kinds of things can be actually treated as fees so that's what SEBI has said that if you need you can increase the total expense ratio so that you can maintain all of these things because you have to ensure that mutual funds are very safe now let us move to number seven MCA panel recommends sustainability reporting for businesses so the minister of Corporate Affairs panel which actually recommended this was led by Gyaneshwar uh, Kumar Singh. So remember the name that's very important and they have proposed a new regime for businesses to report how sustainable and responsible they are in addition to being compliant with the law. So you have to now report how much environmentally sustainable you are, how much your operations are harming the environment or what you are doing to reduce your carbon footprint all those things so that they can actually get an idea of how sustainable the company actually is. Now this is called the BRSR filings. So this will be business responsibility and sustainability report filings and they will be made in two formats the comprehensive report and a light version. So two different formats you have to publish and later on this will be used to create a business responsibility and sustainability index for the companies. So people can understand which are the companies that are being very responsible and they are doing their business in a very sustainable kind of way. So this is a great initiative by the MCA and hopefully this will be actually helping our environment. Now number eight, Paytm money enters stock broking after approval from SEBI. Now this is a big news because Paytm money, they will be building products for users who are new to trading with a 100k daily trades target in six months. So they are going to go very big and of course the new investors who are coming into the market because see nowadays what's happening is that in the pandemic people are not getting great returns from their banks. So they are actually moving towards the stock markets and a huge number of people have opened new DMAT accounts in this year itself and that's that's why Paytm money is also coming into this picture and they have plans to enter the derivative segment as well and provide options around futures trading. So they are going to give all of those things as well and they are going to allow weekly or monthly automated trades. So you can just set some automated trades. So even if you are away, those trades will actually go through and they are going to challenge the established players like Zerodha, Grow and Upstocks. So all these established players, they are now going to face the competition from a new entrant. So that's about this news. Let us move to number nine. SEBI issues circular for management of complaints by listed entity and exchanges. Now this is also very important. So stock exchanges, 
they have been granted permission to levy a fine of rupees 1000 per day per complaint on listed entity for failure to redress investor complaints within the stipulated time now what is this stipulated time it is maximum of 30 days so if any listed organization got a complaint from an investor then they have to go ahead and dispose of it within 30 days otherwise the levy is 1000 rupees per day and the depositories can even freeze entire shareholding of promoters in case of non compliance so it's very serious and the complaints overdue will be forwarded to the designated stock exchange the D- ese through sebi scores platform so we have already talked quite a lot about the scores platform and i hope that you remember that and so this is the entire thing about this news and just make a note of the fine that is very important let us move to number 10 sebi fines sbi lic and bank of baroda for violating mutual fund norms so this is very interesting a penalty of 10 lakh rupees were levied on each of them because a shareholder or sponsor owning at least 10% stake in an amc is not allowed to have 10% or more stake in another mutual fund house so this is very important if you already have 10% stake in one mutual fund house then you cannot go ahead and invest 10% or more in another mutual fund house so they have actually breached these things and we came to know that state bank of india life insurance corporation and bank of baroda they are sponsors of sbi mutual fund lic mutual fund and baroda mutual fund while also holding greater than 10% stake in each of these mutual funds so that is not allowed as per sebi and also they have sponsored the uti asset management company they all have greater than 10% stake in that amc and that is why these things are in contravention of the rules and sebi has now levied some fines on them because of this fact and now that we are going to have the uti amc ipo i think that they are going to offload those shares so it won't be a problem now let's move to number 11 government proposes further stake sale of irctc to meet sebi's norms now this is very interesting because see irctc the ipo it actually happened in 2019 so this means that now they have to go ahead and reduce their shareholding so currently government holds 87.4% stake in irctc and they will be lowering it to 75% according to sebi's public holding norms within 3 years of listing any company they have to actually have 25% minimum public shareholding or mps now we have already talked about this in our previous session so i am not going deep into it 75% you can keep 25% has to be with the public and this will be done via the offer for sale method now recently in my banking awareness video i had made a video whereby i had explained this offer for sale method so if you want you can go check it out and uh, this is how they are actually going to just offload the shares and it will be managed by dpam which is the department of investment and public asset management management now they will be inviting the rfp bids from merchant bankers which is the request for proposal so by this they are going to actually further stake sale and they are going to reduce their stake holding so that is all about this one let us move to number 12 NSE is going to launch silver options in commodity derivative segment so earlier the NSE had launched gold mini options we had already covered it and now the exchange has received sebi's nod for options in goods contracts on underlying silver spot price for trading in the commodity derivative segment so now they are going to have the silver options they already had the gold options so that's it about this news uh, number 13 sebi suspends registration of merchant banker corporate strategic alliance so this suspension it is for one year for failing to meet fit and proper person requirement as a merchant banker now why did this actually happen illegal gains were made by this corporate strategic alliance in 2016 with platinum corporation and its directors or promoters whereby they offloaded some shares using false and misleading corporate announcements thereby violating the pftp or the prohibition of fraudulent and unfair trade practices norms so because of this they were already penalized and they were told by sebi that you have to just go ahead and disgorge all your illegally made gains but corporate strategic alliance could not actually do it and that is why sebi is now penalizing them and they are now suspended for one year Now let us move to number 14 SEBI imposes penalty on NSE for irregularities in CEO compensation so SEBI has imposed penalty of rupees 50 lakh on the NSE for irregularities in compensating its former top bosses Ravi Narayan and 
Chitra Ramakrishna. So what basically happened was that NSE made amendments to the compensation policy of senior management without SEBI's approval which is mandatory under Rule 27.4 of Stock Exchange and Clearing Corporation SECC regulations. So because of these regulations whenever any stock exchange has to just change the compensation policy then they have to actually get the approval from SEBI which NSE did not take and that is why they are now penalized for rupees 50 lakh. Now we move to the final Final thing for today, number 15, SEBI eases processing of FPI documents in lockdown hit areas. FPI is the foreign portfolio investors. So after representations from various stakeholders, SEBI decided to allow scanned copies of documents for renewing the FPI registration in jurisdictions that continue to be under lockdown during the pandemic. Now you can understand that for the FPI registrations, they actually want some physical copies of their KYC and all the other details. But because of this pandemic, they are now getting giving some relaxations to people who cannot afford to do that and the intermediaries they must ensure that they have undertaken necessary due diligence towards compliance with the AML norms which are the anti money laundering norms while processing the documents based on scanned copy. So they have to be double careful right now and they have to just ensure that the FPI registration is done properly. With this we come to the end of our session on SEBI current affairs for the month of August 2020. I hope that you learned something from this video. And and that it was beneficial to you please give it a like and share it with your friends and if you want to see more of this kind of content please click on the subscribe button and do not forget to click the bell icon so that you my friend do not miss any future update i'll see you in the next video bye bye